Now, uh, generally, I wouldn't expect Republicans— Oh, I'm sure they won't hold him accountable. I don't know. Very rare. I mean, very rare for people who are within the government They're to be held accountable for their— chomping at the bit. The Republicans are chomping at the bit to do something about Benghazi, right? Okay. Well, now they have him over a barrel— I just don't think they're just going to leave this alone, personally. But we'll see. You know, maybe. You may be right. All right. So, toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Mark, it's a good time to uh, get into a mortgage these days, right? Well, I'm not going to give advice on when you should get into a mortgage and when you shouldn't. But if you need one, mm. um, I would say that now might be a good time. Mortgage Minute guy, Roger Schlesinger, he's uh, he definitely believes it is. Because there are private loan sellers who are competing now against directly against the U.S. government. A lot of people have seen an opening in the marketplace. They've seen that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac mismanage loans, and that uh, Dodd Frank has, uh, you know, sort of messed up the loan industry in many ways. And so they're opening, reopening this uh, sector that kind of got closed after the the mortgage crisis, which was the stated income loan. So if you Want, you know, for instance, you need to refinance or you need to get some cash out for whatever reason or you're buying a home and you can't show income, don't want to show income because I got a stated income loan just because it was easier than going through and getting all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. um, and so and, you know, I paid mine off. I don't see any reason why others wouldn't um, wouldn't do the same. So is all you got to do is uh, rates are the rates are great. And all you have to do is uh, state your income truthfully, obviously, and you can get a loan. Um, whether it's as a refinance or cash out, call the Mortgage Minute Guy. It's 866-288-0088 or go to MortgageMinuteGuy.com, 866-288-0088. They actually redid the website at MortgageMinuteGuy.com. Looks great. 866-288-0088. Rob's in Richburg, Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live. Rob. I love you guys. You're the only mortgage advertiser who would put the word truthfully in there. <laughs> You're so it's great. Um, Thank you. I, I'm calling about the Canadian thing. Of, of, of course, it's crazy, but I think it's just part of a broader war on traditional manliness. Just tradi everything that's traditionally masculine. My dad might have a gun at home. I mean, I know guns are highly restricted in Canada, you know, but they're still legal. You know, you probably have to have a thousand permits and, and, and a DNA sample or God knows what. Mm -hmm. But it's just part of a war on men. I mean, I don't know if you guys participate in pop culture at all, but, you know, they do ha get TV up there in Keene, and every <laughs> single... I don't there, watch there it. Is no, yeah, I, I, I don't mine's either. unplugged, but, but every... I mean, there is no show in which a man is not a moron. There is no cultural touchstone anywhere... There's yeah, but I mean, hold on. I mean, aren't you one. being... Uh, that's kind of unfair. Aren't there shows where, where women are you know, uh, crazy. I mean, one of the old kind of stereotypes of women as well. I mean, there's plenty of stereotypes on television. Okay, but that's not what I said. What I said is there is not one example of anything like Father Knows Best. Leave it to be. Right? There's not one example anywhere where one father is not the dope whose wife and kids teach him everything because he's a bumbling idiot. Well, I think that there's, but, there's, um, you know, you'd said man before, and what came to my mind was a lot of these cop shows, like, uh, I don't know who that Jack guy is from 24, but, uh, you know, he's pretty darn competent. Um, yeah, but is he a father? But I, I think that, that, you know, you might you might be on to something as far as fathers. I don't know. I, I don't watch enough of this. And Dexter uh, is uh, definitely not incompetent, and he's a father. Well, but he's is, a, the he's show isn't about killer. him being a father, though. Oh, yes, it is. In a lot of ways, it is. Have I, you seen Dexter? Um, only the a few episodes. As soon as he has a child, then it becomes very much about him being a father to some extent. That's that's one of the story yeah, arcs. Sorry, so he's a, so that guy know, that guy isn't incompetent. He's a serial killer and very good at it. Oh, okay. So the so the the, the role model, I don't know that show. I'm sorry, but the role model male figure is a serial serial killer. Yes. Well, how he's about the, the Walking Dead? I don't know a whole lot of shows, but I've watched a handful of them over the years. The Walking Dead's another popular show that's still in production. The father, the main father, is the protagonist in that program and is mostly dis, uh, displayed as a as a heroic character who is a leader of uh, of others. I mean, there's one episode where he has a mental break, but it's a long series, and there's a lot that happens in a dramatic series like that. Okay, well, mostly I wanted to talk about the main thing of the story. I'm sorry sure. to get off to the side. Is the, the the biggest, well, it's hard to say the biggest threat to freedom with the people we have in leadership now, but one of the least recognized threats to freedom is child protective services. 
Oh, no doubt about that. And the power that they have. And uh, it's all conducted in secret. It's uh, Frankly, it's all conducted by women. But um, it's, I mean, child protective services. Oh, that's not necessarily Virginia, true either. Uh, we actually had uh, Carlos on uh, on here, Carlos Morales, yep. who was formerly a uh, one of their inspectors or whatever you call them, in, in investigators. And so there are there are men involved in that, but it's certainly a system that is slanted against the uh, the dad in any kind of domestic situation. I mean, that much I think there's. And I would say that there's probably for. a larger amount of women who are in that uh, system than men. Um, I don't know what that means. You mean as far as workers, government workers? Yeah, uh, yeah. Generally, I would just say that, that those are the ones that are interested in those types of jobs. Well, I guess there was also what that I story mean? out of Florida about one of the higher ups at the Florida CPS who got caught. I don't know if it was with child pornography or actually molesting the kids uh, in the in the care of the CPS system, but it could attract those kind of people as well. Go ahead, Rob. The, the, the guy you're talking about that you had on as a guest, was he the guy who like bailed on the system and said it was corrupt? He did, as a matter of fact. And he does his own podcast. It's called Truth Over Comfort, and uh, I hear it's pretty good. I haven't had a chance to, to sample it myself, but whenever he's on Free Talk Live, he's always got some outrageous stories to tell about his experience working inside the system. So you might want to check him out, Carlos Morales at Truth Over Comfort. Thanks, Rob, for the call tonight. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. It's that same kind of persecution mentality like, the Christians, there's a war on Christmas. It's, uh, that's what that reminds me of, this war on men. I don't know if it exists as much as the people who think it exists. But they think, think there's a war on women, too. I mean, everybody, I'm sure the women think that as well. Everybody who's in a sub- subsection believes that somehow they're being persecuted. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I, on the other hand, am. <laughs> Just give up the persecution complex. More on the way. It's Free Talk Live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. What if humans found a habitable planet, set up housekeeping, and then got left alone by Earth and its big government? Well, that happened in Freehold, Michael Z. Williamson's seminal work. Now available for the first time in a signed, limited hardback edition. Other books in this series are also available in paperback. I cannot recommend a modern fiction work more highly than Freehold. Earth might have left Freehold alone, but it doesn't stay that way. It's war. Get your copy right now at all major booksellers and shop.freetalklive.com. Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no hair has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Take control, toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features there. Freekeen.com, of course, is my blog site. Uh, Freekeen blogger Rich Paul arrested earlier today. We still have that story coming up tonight. And your calls and thoughts, certainly welcome. You're looking into getting some Bitcoins? Maybe you've been thinking about it. You've been eyeballing the price, and uh, it's been going up recently. It's down just a little bit. Did it dip down today a bit? Might, okay. might be the time. Yeah. I don't know. Cashintocoins.com is where you can go to get your Bitcoins. Once you've got your wallet set up, you got to get your wallet first. Uh, you can go to blockchain.info to get a free Bitcoin wallet, and they do a great job with that. But when you're ready to load your Bitcoin wallet up with Bitcoins, or fractions of a Bitcoin, Go to cashintocoins.com. They uh, make it easy, it's safe, fast, legal, inexpensive, and customer service is their top priority. You can use money order, check, or wire transfer, and they've got awesome rates. In fact, it costs you no transfer fee if you're ordering less than $40 worth of uh, the Bitcoin at cashintocoins.com. If you order more than $40, it's a very, very reasonable fee. Cashintocoins.com. As we continue here, we've got Ty. He is on the line Via Skype, our Skype username, by the way, is lrn.fm. Go ahead, Ty. Hey, I'm glad that somebody uh, called in, even if it was by accident, about the quote-unquote prisoner swap. Um, yes. Wanted to wanted to bring something up about that. You know, this is this is actually more evidence that the nation of laws idea is really completely mythical, because the uh, people who are condemning the sergeant who was retrieved. Uh, they're condemning him without him having been convicted in a military court for desertion or anything like that. And the prisoners, quote unquote, that hmm. were swapped for him are have never been tried for any of their supposed wow. terrorist crimes. So it's where's true. the law? This sounds like a win win to me. I mean, five people get out of Guantanamo. Another guy gets well, out of uh, prison. Just, <laughs> just because they're in Guantanamo doesn't make them innocent or anything like that but mark if they've never received a trial they're innocent until proven guilty and the fact that they were released means they didn't want to bother proving them guilty they're presumed innocent um and they haven't received you know what do you do in this circumstance because let them out in and a, have a life in a legal situation um well I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that there are some really evil mamma jammas down in Guantanamo. Well, then they should prove it in a court. And now exactly. what has it been? A what decade court? that they've been there? Which court? Any court. Yeah, okay, prove you want something, something in New somewhere. York City? I don't know, Mark. I don't care. They're, they're not, no there's one no has jurisdiction. Anything proven about anything. Agreed, but there's no jurisdiction. They can yeah, make the up is, jurisdiction. Uh, what are you talking about? There's no jurisdiction. I mean, they always yeah, have Mc jurisdiction. All they have to do is say they have it. Ty? Yeah, McCain called the, these guys that, that were swapped the hardest of the hardcore. Well, if they're the hardest of the hardcore, then obviously they've got evidence, right? Sure. Shouldn't they have evidence? If they have evidence, they should ha be able to provide this in some court somewhere. Well, it doesn't matter what kind of make-believe jurisdiction. Here we go back to fantasy land, there. right? I mean, Mark, you were talking earlier about the fantasy of, uh, you know, I forget which citizen's arrest or whatever it was. But uh, here we have more legal and fantasy where essentially 
these guys can be held for apparently their entire lives or an indefinite period of time without any sort of access to a trial, without any kind of presentation of evidence, and that people aren't absolutely outraged about that is shocking because this could happen to somebody that you care about. That really is the shocking part. Nobody has mentioned this in any of the articles I've read. They either focus on, well, this uh, sergeant was a deserter, and some people say, no, he hasn't been tried, you know, but not very few are saying that. that I've only seen that actually on, on Facebook from more libertarians saying that the guy hasn't been tried yet. But actually in the actual news articles that I've read, none of them say anything about convictions. None of them say anything about uh, evidence. For the terrorists, either no, they're, they're all they're focused on they're focused on their political shenanigans. That's mm -hmm. what they're focused. on. Yeah, the accusation. Ty, anything else yeah. you want to share tonight? No, nope, that's it. Thanks for the call. I appreciate hearing from you at eight fifty five four fifty free. You know, it shocks me, Mark, that somebody who spent time in prison in the United States, by the way, I imagine that means your stay was probably a little more comfortable than Guantanamo Bay. But that's speculation on my part. There probably wasn't any waterboarding involved in in your stay in in prison. That that you know that you seem kind of callous to these guys. I mean, they've been imprisoned without trial. For, a, what, a decade? When did they start rounding them up? 2001, 2002, somewhere in there? That's part of my concern, is that uh, they've been treated so poorly by the United States government in the ways that they've been treated, that the um, and the way that the war on terror has been mm -hmm. uh, prosecuted, and I hate to, I hesitate to use that term, but the way that the, the war on terror has come about, there's a lot of sort of legal difficulties. If you capture somebody who is a terrorist or whatever, a member of al-Qaeda or whatever it is that you believe they are in, al in um, Afghanistan, what do you do with them? They're not a prisoner of war exactly because you're not negotiating with any – because at the end of World War II, the Germans were let go. The Japanese were let go, right? Uh -huh. Like the yep. war's over. Well, the war you on let terror them doesn't go. end. The war on terror doesn't end even though hostilities in um, Afghanistan are going to end, right? Here in this country, they're at least supposed to give you the semblance of a trial. Even though we know a lot of cases complete show trials and it's you know big sham, they're at least going to present some kind of case. They're going to call people up on the stand. They're going to present the evidence. These guys are not getting that. There's no moral issue here. The fact is they haven't been convicted of anything and they've been sitting in a prison cell and that's inhumane, period. If they did something, prove they did something. And we know it's a joke. Have one of your joke kangaroo courts set up and at least show the world that you're going to try to make it look like you're giving people uh, some respect to their rights. But uh, they don't care about rights, and they don't believe that humans in other parts of the world are equal to Americans, which is sick. I don't disagree with any of those statements. However, I'm also of the opinion that I, but like one guy is a member of the Taliban. Like, f like that's for sure. He was like a cabinet member of the Taliban. I don't take them as a group that really gives a damn about rights either. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here we have a situation like World War II, for instance, where you have the, the majority of the conflict in, in Europe or Asia went on, went between Stalin and Hitler. Now tell me who the best one is between these two. I don't really uh, care about that. Is it illegal to be in the Taliban? Is it a crime to be in the Taliban? Did this guy commit criminal acts? Did he commit bombings? Did he ask others to bomb for him? If so, let's see the proof. If not, let the man out so he can go lead his life, whatever that was going to be. And not only let them out, but issue an apology while you're at it and cut him a check. Because these people have been imprisoned and it's wrong. I don't think an apology or cutting a check is a bad idea. Um, like, you know, like something, this is the point that I'm trying to make here, Ian, is something needs to bring this to an end. It doesn't, it's not been yeah. brought to an end. Didn't Barack Obama promise that he was going to close down Guantanamo? They're politicians. They right. lie. I don't sure care do. about that. The point I'm trying to talk about is that something needs to bring in an end, and a prisoner trade isn't really an end. Like, mm -hmm. there there needs oh, to- I'm sure there are, what, a hundred more people Here's there? my opinion- Kill him or Whoa. apologize to him. Okay, let's go with the apology. One they of the two. Done anything wrong you know, that we can tell. somehow make good or 
just kill them dead because I do think that these people are dangerous. And it's some of those some of those people released. I really do believe we're dangerous. You know who's people. dangerous, and we know who are dangerous. The United States military invading other countries and kidnapping people off the streets, who in a lot of cases were fingered by people. What was it in Pakistan? There were uh, you know the whoever the government goons were there. They basically brought some of these people to the United States uh, troops and said, "Yeah, these guys are they're with the Taliban. Here you go. You need some bodies to fill those cells here." We'll give them to you. Now, give us the reward. I don't— dis- uh, That seems really reliable. Yes. Do you understand that there are far fewer people at Gitmo than there were six or seven years ago? Great. Let's empty the whole place out as far as I'm concerned at this point, unless you've actually got somebody who's been convicted of some sort of crime against humanity. I'm with you. Give them a, give them a trial or let them go. I'm with you. Okay. But there I don't you know how you do that. See, this is one of the problems. Until the United— what, You what take you them could out be, of the cell. What you pre- could be suggesting, sir, is that the United States just full-on becomes an empire. That they say, okay, we'll set up a court. We have jurisdiction over the whole planet. No, that's not what I'm suggesting. I'm just trying to come up with some way to get out of this situation. And I think it's, it's, it's horrifying— that men are being held against their will with no charges whatsoever. I don't support a warmongering state, but there are men in a in a prison cell right now, and I don't know what the current number is. I don't re- I don't know how many of them have been released. I've heard it's been what dozens, hundreds. I, I don't I don't dozens. I don't know. I'm sure. Um, so I don't know how many they still have there, but I and I don't know how many of the ones they've had there that they have had there are actually convicted of anything. I'd be interested in seeing those numbers. But these aren't just numbers. These are men who have families. And I'm sure they'd like to see their families again and their and vice versa. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You may take control of the airwaves. Coming up, our friend Rich Paul arrested today. We will give you the update on what happened there. Plus, Mark has another terrible school story involving a dad who is under threat to send his uh, child to the government school system. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Hour 2's next. Free Talk Live. Today, people go to college, do coursework, repeat what professors tell them, get degrees, and are issued official transcripts from state-approved institutions. In the future, people will learn online and obtain pseudonymous academic credentials associated with their Bitcoin address. That future is now. At mathgate.info, you can learn basic reasoning skills. Instead of a transcript, you can earn cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. For more information, come to mathgate.info. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, June 4th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,248, while silver opened at $18.83, and Bitcoin is trading at $642. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Bitmain Technology, creators of the Antminer S1 180 Gigahash Bitcoin Miner. No pre-order, ships on time, and sometimes it's early. 
Buy yours today at bitmaintech.com or call them up at 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free. Online, affordablesound.com or give them a call, 512-459-5253. In the news, on Tuesday, Attorney General Eric Holder said the Justice Department will revive a task force on domestic terrorism in an attempt to stop violence within the United States. Holder stated that the Domestic Terrorism Executive Committee will work to eliminate the danger from violent individuals who may be motivated by anti-government or racist views. The FBI, the National Security Division of the Justice Department, and the Attorney General's Advisory Committee will lead the efforts. The committee was originally launched to focus on right-wing extremism in the aftermath of the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing. Former CBS News reporter Cheryl Atkinson detailed the decline of independent media and the rise of censorship. The award-winning investigative reporter spoke with the Daily Signal about a tendency in news media and news management to censor or block stories that don't fall in line with the mainstream narrative. Atkinson left CBS News in March after a 20-year career due to censorship. The Washington Times reports the Pentagon knew the location where Sergeant Bo Bergdahl was being held captive, but refrained from rescuing him due to the high risk of casualties and resentment they felt for a soldier they deemed to be a deserter. Several times, U.S. Special Forces debated rescuing Bergdahl, but felt losing highly trained troops was too steep of a price to pay for rescuing a soldier that willingly walked away from his unit. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM. June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. And support comes from an accountable authority. Now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Take action and join for free to gain community support and protection. Online at accountableauthority.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, June 4th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Tuesday, the Register released previously unknown details regarding the British GCHQ's covert surveillance program, including information about an internet monitoring station in Siba Oman. The base is part of a program codenamed Circuit and was originally built in collaboration with the Omani government. The new revelations also unmask a large network of undersea cables passing through the Strait of Hormuz into the Persian Gulf. The locations of the access points are classified three levels above top secret, while the names of the companies involved are classified two levels above. The Natural News Forensic Food Lab has discovered, after testing a flu vaccine made by GlaxoSmithKline, that it contains 51 parts per million of mercury. That's over 25,000 times the recommended limit for mercury contaminant in public drinking water set by the EPA. Health Ranger Mike Adams also revealed the GSK's packaging blatantly admits there's been no controlled trials, no evidence of safety of effectiveness in pregnant women, never proven safe or effective for children, and never tested for cancer risk. Mothers of premature infants were tricked into participating in a government-funded study conducted under the National Institute of Health that potentially posed risk to their survival. The government-backed study called support randomly manipulated preemie oxygen levels for more than 1,000 extremely premature babies. Mothers approached about the study were told a variety of lies, including that the study was primarily a support group for developmentally struggling children. Dr. Michael Crome, an expert on research ethics with the Watchdog Group Public Citizen, described the consent form presented to mothers as egregious and having shocking deficiencies in the informed consent process. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud. All natural teeth whitener. Go to mymagicmud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's mymagicmud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, June 4th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Gourmet chef Ted Allen is here. He's the author of the new cookbook, Pretentious Foodie Bullshit. And he's going to show us how to cook some fussy little foodie dishes for you and all your old friends. Welcome Aww. back to the show, Ted. What sort of stupid, over-elaborate, fancy ass meal are you going to make for us today? We're going to cook one of the very most pretentious dishes in my cookbook. Oh. It's a stupid ass 
trendy piece of fish coated in some kind of nut you've never heard of, served alongside a puree of baby something or other. Oh, great. Great. That's annoying. <laughs> Let's yeah. get started. Okay, have at it. First, it's very important to choose the most expensive type of fish you can find for some vague environmental reason that you can then pair it back to your faux intellectual gay wad oh. dinner party oh. guests. Okay. And now I assume all these other ingredients are organic and locally sourced and all that bullshit. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yes. Now, uh, what about the uh, pureed baby turnips, Ted? Ah, you <laughs> must blanch them for 30 seconds, then you shock them in an ice bath, peel them, then boil them again with a little sugar, thyme, and a pinch of salt. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program, and you can bring up whatever happens to be on your mind. Just dial in toll-free here. 855-450-FREE is the number. That number brought to you by ProXPN. That's 855-450-3733. we got some terrible school-related stories to share uh, with you tonight. And also, actually, since we're now in the second hour of the program, our radio affiliates in Sarasota and Bradenton, Florida, are on board WSRQ on AM and FM. And that happens to be where, Mark, you and I are from. Yep. I didn't know that when I pulled up this news story. You didn't know where you were from when you pulled up this news story? I'm sorry. I didn't know. You're right. I didn't know that this news story that we're going to share was from Sarasota, Florida. Just one of those things. Saw the headline. And it's from where we're where we're from originally. The story is from Wired.com. U.S. Marshals seize cops spying records to keep them from the ACLU. A routine request in Florida for public records regarding the use of a surveillance tool known as Stingray took an extraordinary turn recently when federal authorities seized the documents before the police could release them. A surprise move by okay. the U.S. Marshals Service stunned the ACLU, which earlier this year filed the public records request with the Sarasota, Florida Police Department for information detailing its use of the controversial surveillance tool. The ACLU had an appointment last Tuesday to review the documents pertaining to a case investigated by a Sarasota police detective, but Marshall swooped in at the last minute to grab the records, claiming they belonged to the U.S. Marshals Service and barring the police from releasing them. ACLU staff attorney Nathan Wessler called the move truly extraordinary and beyond the worst transparency violations that the group has seen hmm. regarding documents detailing police use of the technology. This is consistent with what we've seen around the country with federal agencies trying to meddle with public requests for Stingray information. So apparently it's not the first time something like this has occurred. Wessler said, noting that federal authorities have, in other cases, invoked the Homeland Security Act to prevent the release of such records. The feds are working very hard to block any release of this information to the public. So what are these stingrays that the ACLU has been investigating? Stingrays are also known as IMSI catchers. They simulate a cell phone tower and trick nearby mobile devices into connecting with them, mm. thereby revealing their location. Stingray can see and record a device's unique ID number and traffic data, as well as information that points to its location. By moving a Stingray around, authorities can triangulate a device's location with greater precision than is possible using data obtained from a carrier's fixed tower location. The records sought by the ACLU are important because the organization has learned that a Florida police detective obtained permission to use a Stingray simply by filing an application with the court under Florida's trap-and-trace statute instead of obtaining a probable cause warrant. Trap-and-trace orders generally are used to collect information from phone companies about telephone numbers received and called by a specific account. A Stingray, however, can track the location of cell phones, including inside private spaces. So essentially... If they're using one of these Stingray devices, they don't need to go through the process of inquiring with the cell phone provider and trying to get access to their information. They can just spoof a cell phone tower, make it appear as though the tower is nearby to the phones in the vicinity, and get information about those phones. It's disturbing. Sounds like an amazing uh, little piece of electronic trickery. <laughs> Makes you want to just throw your cell phone away, doesn't it? The government has long asserted that it doesn't need a probable cause warrant to use stingrays because the device doesn't collect the content 
of the phone calls and text messages, but instead operates like pen registers and trap traces or trap and traces, collecting the equivalent of header information. The ACLU and others argue the device are more invasive than a trap and trace. Uh, and and it's certainly true that, I mean, if you're if you've got a device that's a radio, I mean, that's what your cell phone is. Yeah. It's a radio transmitter that is constantly receiving and transmitting data. You want to you want to know why your uh, smartphone is dead before the end of the day in some cases? Because it's constantly pushing out data to uh, you know whether it's checking your email. If you or, put it on, um, if if you put it on airplane mode, it'll last much longer. Oh, that thing will last for days on uh, on airplane mode because it's not doing anything. It's not communicating with anything. The ACLU and others argue that the device is uh, more invasive than a trap and trace. Recently, Tallahassee police revealed that they had used stingrays at least 200 times since 2010 without telling any judge because the device's manufacturer made the police department sign a non-disclosure ad- agreement that the police claim prevented them from disclosing use of the device to the courts. Now, that's an interesting claim that, a, that an agreement between the police department and the manufacturer of this device <laughs> would somehow supersede the police department's responsibility, which apparently doesn't exist, to inform the courts. Well, we just can't do nothing. Uh, well, uh, they told us we couldn't tell you, court system. So <laughs> what are we supposed to do? We <laughs> which, wanted to use this toy. We just didn't know nothing. Uh, according to the story, the ACLU has filed numerous records requests with police departments around the country in an effort to uncover how often the devices are used and how often courts are told about them. In the Sarasota case, the Marshal Service claimed it owned the records that Sarasota police had offered to the ACLU because they had deputized the detective in the case, making all documentation in the case federal property. So they just turned it into something. Okay. Right. They had, I don't know, he must have told them, right? Like this uh, detective must have given them a heads up. Somehow the U.S. Marshals came across the information that the ACLU was requesting this information. So they came up with a plot. Yeah. All right, Jimmy, we're going to deputize you. And then you're going to work for us, technically. And that way we'll own everything. (laughs) (laughs) They won't suspect a thing. They'll never be able to do anything about it. And uh, before the ACLU could view the documents Sarasota had put aside for them, the agency dispatched a marshal from Tampa to seize the records and move them to an undisclosed location. The U.S. Marshal Service declined to comment, saying, quote, it does not discuss pending litigation, unquote. Florida public records law requires that even if a dispute over records occurs, the Sarasota police were legally obligated to hold on to the records for at least 30 days once it had received the ACLU's request. The period would have given the ACLU a chance to argue its case in court to obtain the records. They said in their blog post today, quote, we've seen our fair share of federal government attempts to keep records about Stingray's secrets, but we've never seen an actual physical raid on state records in order to conceal them from public view, according to the ACLU's blog. They filed an emergency motion seeking a temporary injunction preventing the police department from releasing additional files to the marshals. The motion also asked the court to find the department in violation of state law for allowing the service, the marshal service, to seize the documents in the first place. And they want the court to order the police department to retrieve the documents because the issue is a state matter and the ACLU filed the motion in state court. The judge cannot directly order the U.S. Marshal Service, a federal agency, to return the documents. Crazy situation. Yeah, I, that's I, – okay, um, so the rule of law, um, pretty much over here in the United States. I mean – Yeah, it's if, been over. If they can go ahead and just do these legal wranglings not to turn over information. Remember, uh, I keep on going back to this, but I think it's important to point out. It's not that I believe in democracies. I don't. It's not that I believe in republics because I don't. But if you do, and many people listening to me likely cl- would claim that they do – you need to understand that if it's this this is a government of the people, by the people, for the people, that the people need to have information. So when the policing departments, the, the people that are supposed to keep us safe, but remember who they're supposed to keep us safe from. They're supposed to keep us safe from us. And we are everything. Right? We're the government. We're the criminals. We people are everything. So in order to keep the people safe from the people, they need to keep the information from the people who make the decision about the people that get into the government. That is a system that simply will not work. Share your thoughts with us. 855-450-FREE. You can bring up absolutely anything. We go to Chad listening in Florida. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Chad. Hey, guys. How are you? Welcome. Go ahead with your thoughts. 
I actually just want to talk about seasteading real quick. Uh, you guys talked about it yesterday. Yes. Uh, a point I don't think that was brought up is necessarily the, uh, the cost of living that would be required for this, the barrier to entry in terms of the economics. So to me, and I guess with Mark, I really sort of wanted you to address this. I understand the cost would eventually come down through something like this, maybe so slightly. But it seems like the people who would be able to afford uh, to move onto the ocean and build their own communities are already people who can escape curing anyway in so many various ways. That's an interesting point. Hang that, on, Chad. I want to bring you yeah. back so you can uh, flesh that out a little bit here, and we'll get Mark's response on sea setting, the idea of moving people out onto an intentional on-the-water community that has never existed before. So we'll talk about that in moments. Your calls are welcome. 855-450-FREE is the pro XPN toll free line. This is Free Talk Live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. What if humans found a habitable planet, set up housekeeping, and then got left alone by Earth and its big government? Well, that happened in Freehold, Michael Z. Williamson's seminal work. Now available for the first time in a signed, limited hardback edition. Other books in this series are also available in paperback. I cannot recommend a modern fiction work more highly than Freehold. Earth might have left Freehold alone, but it doesn't stay that way. It's war. Get your copy right now at all major booksellers and shop.freetalklive.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, May 21st, 2014, gold opened at 1288.50. A one-ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1335.40, 667.70 for a half ounce, or 333.85 for a quarter ounce. That's 1335.40, 667.70, and 333.85. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. According to a report released this week, people who paint themselves silver and pretend to be statues earn, on average, $10 million per year. The Onion sat down with economist Mark Cosgrave to learn more about the money-making potential of this highly lucrative employment path. There's no more profitable career at the moment. If you compare these positions to other high-paying jobs, say physicians or mechanical engineers, you'll find that those individuals who have outfitted themselves with silver painted boxes and can move their limbs stiffly as if they were a robot are making literally hundreds of times as much. At this point, I would say that the only job that offers anywhere near that kind of earning potential is dressing up like Batman and allowing people to pose for photos with you. And those guys who play paint buckets like drums have historically done well for themselves. But honestly, the recession hit these professions pretty hard, and a lot of them are only making something like $800,000 a year at this point. It's barely even worth their time. This is the Onion News Network. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on Earth? Most coffee at grocery stores or in chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, BuzzBox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. 
Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, bring up anything you want. We uh, got a seasteading question on the table here, and then still to come, uh, more about some bad schools, plus our friend Rich Paul arrested today in Keene, New Hampshire. We'll tell you what that's all about. It's breaking news. Hasn't even hit the blog over at freekeen.com yet. Blockchain.com, you can go there. Actually, blockchain.info, I guess I, I we should talk about. Blockchain.info is uh, a great site where you can go and get a uh, Bitcoin wallet that is free. Uh, and it's easy to sign up for. There's a you know a few steps that you have to jump through, but it's not very complicated at all. And and it, there's a testimony to the fact that it's not very complicated. I think blockchain's got over a million and a half Bitcoin wallets. The last I heard, there were yeah. like a million and a half Bitcoin wallets that they've created for people. And you can get yours for free at blockchain.info. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Chad is still with us here in Florida. And Chad, you had had a question about seasteading. Uh, Mark was kind of on the show last night. It was mostly about seasteading last night. And, uh, Mark, you're a huge fan of this idea of people yep. going out onto the water, creating sort of platforms and interlocking them and moving them around into different communities and or like getting a boat and having people live on the boat in a more sort of freedom-oriented society. Um, and your concern was on the cost side, Chad. Go ahead with your question. Uh, yeah, basically my concern is that the, the upfront cost of this would be in the millions and millions of dollars. I understand $500,000 a person, that number was sort of thrown around, but the cost of living alone – same maintain something like this, you should require so many outside resources. I mean, you have to be a multimillionaire in order to do this. And I feel like those individuals who have that kind of resource and have that kind of wealth already have ample opportunity in different ways that a lot of people don't have in order to escape tyranny. So I'm wondering who would benefit from this the most, because it doesn't seem like something that would lower cost in a reasonable time frame because proliferation and the spread of something is what, what reduces the cost. And something like this is very limited. In terms of it, um, you know how many people could live there and how many people well, could actually do it. It depends on what you're looking at as far as the seasteading goes. One of the reasons I don't particularly, I'm not particularly excited about the uh, the whole idea of the large interlocking uh, platforms and you know people with uh, essentially houseboats on the water that are able to hook up and create these uh, intentional communities. Although I think those things are awesome, I think they're expensive. Now I don't know what the costs are going to be for an individual, but um, you know, like they said, a half a million was bandied about. That's not a number that is completely unreachable for the average American. I mean, there's uh, when I, where I come from, came from in Sarasota, Florida, houses averaged a quarter million dollars uh, before the the, right. the, re, the real estate bust. So you're not talking about some number that's too far out of the the realm of possibility. But if you could do something a little less costly, like, say, uh, get a uh, cruise ship, which has outlived its uh, usefulness as a cruise ship, and then, you know, do something like that, I think you could bring the, the numbers down. But I get where you're coming from. The thing is, is a multimillionaire really doesn't have that much money. You're not talking about somebody that's that extraordinarily wealthy. I think you have to have $10 million right. just so Somebody to be, who makes $20,000 a year, it sure as hell seems like a lot of money. I don't you're know still what you're just talking about. Really you're still, <laughs> okay. You're talking about somebody who's in the top 2%, not even the top 1% to, to have multi-million dollars, okay? That's a lot of money to most people, Mark. Understood. Okay. The people that got uh, flat screen TVs when they first came out and they were $5,000 were pretty wealthy, too. It was more like $50,000 okay. when flat screens came out. Right, I don't right. think that's necessarily a fair analogy because that technology obviously was less expensive and has room to grow because you have a large market for it. A I very large market. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, okay. I mean, everybody needs so a TV or feels like they want a if TV. If you're living on Long Island exactly. and you're paying uh, $20,000 a year in property taxes and uh, your car registration something like two grand a year – and your income taxes are something like 60 grand a year. You don't feel like, yes, I'm free. You feel like. If you're living on Long Island, you probably don't care about freedom that much. Why? You think that just because, really, that's what you think, Ian? You think that the people, that there, there's nobody on Long Island that cares about uh, freedom? If you care about freedom, you should get the hell out of New York State, oh, right. period. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you live in and New I York did, State, yeah, New York Ian has decided <laughs> you're not libertarian enough if you live in New York State. That's not what, what I'm an saying. What an a hole. 
I mean, I'm from New York, and I think that, um, interestingly enough, um, one of the areas in New York that sort of led to my question is if you go to the Thousand Islands up there, it's the border between Canada and the United States that has all this sort of water-based, you know, tons of little landmass area. And the people there travel between the countries freely because they're wealthy and they're sort of immune to the immigration laws and the restrictions that you would get otherwise in the roadways. I feel like wealthy people in general have a lot of opportunities like this. They have their own communities that often aren't annexed by larger cities. Um, and they have a lot of ways in which they can escape tyranny already. The common person, seasteading offers no, you know, I mean, there's no way the common person would really benefit from it. What do you want me to um, do about that? When was the last time that a new technology, a new, better way of living came along and it was offered to poor people before rich people? No, I understand. I just think that in this case, that's not really likely to trickle down because it's such a limited landmass. I mean, it's something like, you what? know, a Hold on. or whatever. Hold on. We're just building but, new things. Every time you, I mean, that's that's like saying that somehow TVs, the, the flat screen TVs, well, well you, there's only so many of them that go around. They'll build more if they work out. Yeah, I, I can sort of see that analogy, but I, I think that a cruise ship is more comparable to like a wealthy condo. You can expand yeah. it and you can move people in and the price is not going to go down. I really don't think that this is going to go down to a reasonable level where a person working at Walmart can afford to move out there. I agree with you on that one, at least no time soon. Well, hold on. Um, If you're working at Walmart, you're likely to move out there to get a job. These people that live on these boats are going to need sandwiches. They're going to need things fixed. They're going to need people Mm. out there. The fact that... Currently, you you know, if you weren't needed wherever it is that you have a job, then you wouldn't be able to afford to live wherever you live anyway. So, I mean, that's yeah, I a, that's another way okay, that this is point. this uh, is going to free people up. the The fact I is, agree, rich people aren't rich without poor going. people around. I agree with that. I just think that also sort of leads to a classist structure, right? Like, if you of have course to it does to be sort of servants. It's not likely that they're going to get fair wages because there's a lack of competition out there for jobs. You think we have a lack of competition for jobs now? Imagine being on a boat. Oh, Horse I would cr- think there'd be plenty of competition for jobs. Absolute nonsense. When you can, when you're competing against somebody from the Philippines for a job, you can you can see that there's definitely going to be some competition for your job. Yeah, there's plenty of competition for jobs on things like cruise ships and things like that. I mean, then you've got international competition for a job. There's no. Uh, false restrictions that a government might put on, like we see here in the United States. You don't have as much competition in certain areas because of governmental restrictions. These seasteading places right, would not have those restrictions. Cruise ship companies, right? So, well, there I mean, can be multiple like seasteads. Well, cruise ships offer something yeah, a little different than, than seasteads. Um, seasteads can right. stay out, and their, uh, their intention is to provide a, a new governmental system. And I think that pioneers have been going places and doing things for a long time. I think that this is plausible and that it'll work, but there's only one way to find out. Yeah, I do think the technologies tend to trickle down. There's always going to be a difference between rich and poor until we have, uh, you know, 3D printers which create all the wealth in the world, um, you know, and 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 free us. But the fact is, government still claim claim all the land. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely understand your point. I just it was really difficult for me to fathom a way that this cost would lower in an immediate or even like within my lifetime or my children's lifetime. This, the, the idea that this cost would lower enough. Well, I have uh, to, to say, I would hope you can be well. proven wrong. I mean, I really want the best yeah. for the seasteading folks. And Chad, thanks for your call. I, I, I can share some of those concerns with this. But, you know, hey, go to town, man. If you've got half a million dollars to, to, to blow on this experiment, then please do it because I think it's exciting. I think it'll be interesting regardless of what happens, whether somebody rolls up with a gunboat and shoots everybody to death and then takes their uh, their little seastead or it happens to work out and then all of a sudden there's all these people building seasteads everywhere. I mean, I hope it's the latter. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Take control of the airwaves here. Our friend Rich Paul arrested. We'll give you the details coming up here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box 
Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800 324 3030. Again, that's 1 800 324 3030. 1 800 324 3030. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Don't worry about things you can't control. Isn't that what they always say? But it's about impossible to avoid worrying about what's going on these days. The government has used the war on guns, the war on drugs, and the war on terrorism to tear our Bill of Rights to shreds. But you can fight back. The Tenth Amendment Center has proven it, racking up major victories. For example, when the U.S. government claimed authority in the NDAA to have the military kidnap and detain Americans without trial, the nullifiers got a law passed in California, declaring the state's refusal to ever participate in any such thing. Their latest project is offnow.org, nullifying the National Security Agency. They've already gotten model legislation introduced in California, Arizona, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas, meant to limit the power of the NSA to spy on Americans in those states. We'd be fools to wait around for the U.S. Congress or courts to roll back Big Brother. Our best chance is nullification and interposition on the state level. Go to offnow.org, print out that model legislation, and get to work nullifying the NSA. The hero Edward Snowden has risked everything to give us this chance. Let's take it. Offnow.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control of the airwaves here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Still to come here tonight, Mark will tell us another crazy school story. And speaking of school, School Sucks Project host Brett Vinat is joining us for the remainder of the program. Welcome. Great to be here. This is one of the highlights of my week. Aw, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. It's always good having you here. It's always a good conversation. You bring uh, some expertise to the table that uh, Mark and I certainly cannot offer. You are the host of the School Sucks Project at schoolsucksproject.com. Yes. And uh, there are many, many uh, archives that can be downloaded there of that show for free. Mm-hmm. You do a video version of the podcast. We do a video version, sure, of some stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's all available at schoolsucksproject.com. Excellent. So, also, uh, the toll-free lines here, 855-450-FREE, are brought to you by ProXPN. That is a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data. Whatever's leaving and coming into your computer has been encrypted by ProXPN if you've downloaded their software at ProXPN. Com slash FTL. One of the reasons why you want to encrypt and protect yourself is because your internet service provider is probably monitoring every website that you visit. 
every search term that you enter for keeping those logs probably for up to five years in a lot of cases. So you can stop that from happening. Just go and get the Pro XPN software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, or Android devices. It's free. You can go to proxpn.com slash FTL and get started there with their free account. Now, they do have a premium account, and uh, once you just try their, pre, uh, their free account out, you'll know these guys are for real. And you're probably going to want their premium account because you get unlimited bandwidth. You get different servers that you can connect to around the world as well as the ability to privately torrent. And you can get it all for 5 bucks a month by using our discount code FTL20, which gets you 20% off of the price of the premium account for the lifetime of the account. If you buy the annual plan, that's how you get the price down to 5 bucks a month. Again, the code is FTL20 for that 20% off. And you can go to proxpn.com slash FTL to go and grab the software and get started. It's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee on the premium account, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. ProXPN.com slash FTL code FTL20. Uh, so still to come here, a crazy school story that Mark has brought to the table, but I want to... I want to, I guess, inform you, the listener, who, if you've listened to the show for a few weeks, you've heard our friend Rich Paul on the air sitting in as, uh, as a guest co-host on Free Talk Live. He was released from jail back in, I think it was December or late November in 2013, after having spent the bulk of 2013, about nine months' worth of the year, in jail. Uh, yeah, whereas we call it the Keen Spiritual Retreat, which we just so happened to talk about earlier this week. We've spent a full show actually talking about what makes that jail different and the, the warden who's unique and kind of more humane than the average jail warden. Got a vice story, uh, an inter- a national story. About yeah, it. he was a major, major story. So uh, we were just talking about it, and now Rich, our friend, is sitting in the Keene Spiritual Retreat, a.k.a. the county jail, on what is called a violation of probation. Now, I've been through the, the court system as a criminal defendant in a bunch of cases that had no uh, victim. Mostly uh, civil disobedience yeah. oriented. And so I've got some experience. I've also experienced the system through my friends who have also been in similar circumstances. But I have never really gone through anybody who's had a violation of probation situation. I was in jail with guys on violation of probation. So I know something about probation. I know that it's a fairly invasive thing that once you're on probation, there's this a lengthy agreement that you sign, and you're very, very restricted. You've got to check in with a probation officer in a lot of cases. They can come to your home. They can search through your stuff any old time they want to. Uh, You're not allowed to have alcohol. You're not allowed to have drugs. You're not allowed to have weapons. You're not allowed to be, in in some cases, in a uh, domicile with alcohol. It's true. Which can be really tough on your parents or your roommate. Right. So, uh, anyway, there's... uh, our friend Rich Paul was arrested today for violating probation. The supposed reasons that he was arrested for uh, include the claim that he has been continuing to use cannabis and the claim that he had a weapon. And those are the two major, I think, claims against him in this case. And wasn't the weapon like a camera? The weapon was a monopod, which is different from a tripod in that it is only one leg instead of three. He was at a scene that we discussed earlier this week. Monday night, there were some local men who were chalking in downtown Central Square in Keene, New Hampshire. There were uh, there was at least one guy there from uh, the Stop Free Keene group who mm-hmm. was cleaning up that chalk. There was a verbal confrontation between the locals who were chalking and this individual who was cleaning it up. That escalated into a louder verbal confrontation, and then two other men from across the street came over and uh, they came at Rich and uh, the other two men that were in the park and a couple of the others who were there as though they were going to fight them. There were some words exchanged previously where one of them specifically threatened a girl who was in the park. I mean, it was a bad, bad scene. And when these guys were coming, one of them was rolling up his sleeves, the other one throws his backpack down. I mean, these guys were coming at them in, in a violent manner, and the video has been linked to on, on freekeen.com if you haven't seen it yet. So Rich throws down his camera that he had, but disconnected the monopod from it first. So Rich held the monopod in his hands in case he needed to defend himself against the oncoming attackers. And I guess it makes some sense. (laughs) Yeah, luckily he didn't have to defend himself. They ended up picking on one of the people who was the chalker. Again, there were these couple local guys that were chalking in the park uh, who are not free keen activists, just locals. And uh, so it was one of those guys who got attacked by the men who were coming at them. 
So Rich didn't have to use the monopod, but he did hold it. He did sort of, you know, wield it as though it were a weapon and the... Perhaps to dissuade somebody from uh, coming at him. The terms of probation say that a uh, you cannot have a weapon or a simulated weapon or something like this. You know, something that you make look like a weapon but might not actually have been a weapon, that kind of thing. It's pretty specific. So that's what they're coming after Rich for. We do not know how much time uh, you know he's going to get for this. It's my understanding that if you get a VOP, a violation of probation, you're at the judge's discretion as far as how much of the sentence that is currently suspended over his head, and I believe it's several years in prison mm -hmm. as a suspended sentence. I don't recall how many the sentence was, but it seemed like it was three to seven. I forget the exact number. He could be going to prison this time. I mean, he was in jail last time for this this marijuana sales. Or it could be, you know, a slap on the hand. Maybe he'll get uh, three months instead of three years. It I, seems ridiculous to lock a man up for picking up a stick, essentially, to defend himself. Well, they're also going to claim he was, uh, that he was still using uh, some sort of drug, presumably cannabis. Did they have the some outside. kind of uh, uh, your analysis or something? I have something? not seen the case file yet, Mark, but I do intend to go to the court tomorrow morning. Rich was arrested this afternoon. And I will pull the case file in the morning to attempt to learn more or whatever it is that I can glean. There will be a hearing for Rich, uh, which is sort of the equivalent of an arraignment. Again, violation of probation isn't exactly like your average crime. No, you're pretty much guilty. Or, or felony. You know, they, they you get arrested for VOP, you're going in the clink until maybe you'll get bail at whatever this hearing is, which will happen. That's pretty, that's pretty normal. Which will happen within 72 hours um in the business week. So basically, it could be as late as Tuesday, as I understand it, that uh, that Rich could be getting this hearing in front of the court. So maybe he'll be bailed out. Maybe the judge will demand that he stay in. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. And then I guess at a later date, there will be a more full hearing on the violation of probation. So he seems like uh, he was kind of a bystander. I mean, that, that's what he intended to be in this incident in question downtown, right? Hey, oh, you're talking about the where the, where uh, there was an attack yeah. that happened? I think Rich was chalking in the park as well okay. on that day yeah. or on that night. And does anybody, I'm just, I'm, I'm interested a little bit more in the incident. Does anybody know what the relationship was or what the motive was for the attack? Uh, did the attackers know the local gentlemen or people? Well, who one were... of the one of the people who came at the the chalkers yeah. is a member of the Stop Free Keen group on Facebook. So it may have been that he's just one of the people who doesn't like chalking, uh, that you know doesn't like what's happening in Central Square. There are a number of people who are upset by people being you know people chalking beautiful artwork and smiley faces and. Nice messages in Central Square. Children also chalking. Families uh, chalking. Some people are upset by this. There's a lot of controversy over chalk right now in Keene, New Hampshire, and it's leading to violence with one man being attacked in the park yesterday who was chalking. He was pushed into the fountain, knocked his head off the rocks in there, and he's currently in with a, some sort of problem with his vertebra, broken this and that, and he is in he's bad got shape. three broken vertebrae. Yeah, in the hospital. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts on the war on chalk. Free Talk Live. What if you could combine the two most powerful diet ingredients into one incredible weight loss super pill? We've done just that. For the first time ever, the miracle fat burner in a bottle, raspberry ketone, has been combined with pure Garcinia cambogia, described as the holy grail of weight loss, to bring you the world's most powerful diet pill. Get your phone ready, because we're releasing free bottles to the first 100 callers. But wait, we haven't just combined the two most powerful weight loss ingredients. We've combined the six most powerful ingredients. Green coffee bean, African mango, moringa, and glucomonin. All the hottest clinically proven weight loss ingredients combined into one fat-shedding super pill. We call it the Skinny Six Super Supplement, and it's available for the very first time. Be one of the first 100 callers and we'll rush you a free bottle. Call 1-800-514-2945. Find out how to get your free bottle. 1-800-514-2945. 1-800-514-2945. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com It's already too late. 
criminals have kicked in your door and are now in your home. Before this happens, homeowners have a choice. One, do nothing and hope you aren't one of the 1.4 million families attacked each year. Or two, refuse to be a victim and for as low as $59, reinforce your doors with door devils. Door devils simply attach to existing door frames and have proven to stop the biggest bad guys from kicking in doors. Read our police testimonials of real-life events at doordevil.com. Alarms don't stop kick-ins. We do. Doordevil.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like here toll-free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you there. You can go and get interactive in a variety of ways, unlike those other talk show hosts who charge you for their sites. Ours is free. So go to freetalklive.com and enjoy. And also, come see Free Talk Live in person and all kinds of other great shows from lrn.fm, as well as great presentations on do-it-yourself topics do it yourself is the theme of this year's Porcupine Freedom Festival, and uh, you know even if you never go to a single presentation at Pork Fest, you'll have a blast because there will be over likely over a thousand, maybe over fifteen hundred people there. So if it was anything, if it's anything like last year, and I suspect it will be, we'll have over fifteen hundred people attending. There's uh, good parties like the Buzz's Big Gay Dance Party, which moves to nighttime. Uh, this year, very, very exciting. I hear there's a big goth dance party this oh, year gosh. at uh, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Brett, you perked up. Are yeah, you, no, not something I'm interested in. No. I'm just, am I goth? He asks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know what you do at that's, home. That, that, oh, that's true. I could have a whole other life. That totally Boston uh, Red Sox hat you have does have a black bee instead of it's a red true. bee on it. So you could that that's a goth. That's a goth. It's creepy. You think, you think that's like a signal for <laughs> other goth people to pick up on? Uh, uh, like, so, yeah. Hey, whatever you're into, there's something happening at the Porcupine Freedom Festival that's probably gonna be attractive to you. Mark's got his family. They're gonna be there with a the dog, and there's other families with dogs uh, in attendance there as well. Do they let you have the dog in the hotel room? Yes. Oh, that's good to know. All right, so um, go to porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. It's a great campground, Rogers Campground, northern part of New Hampshire. The real attraction, though, and it's beautiful vistas and things like that, but the real attraction is to meet the people who are here as part of the Free State Project and, more importantly, the people who are yet to move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, which is the idea of moving liberty-oriented people all to the same geographic area 
to get active for freedom. You can experience what that community of people is like for one week coming up June 22nd through the 29th. Go to Porkfest.com. You cannot get tickets online at this point, but that doesn't mean you can't get in. You can still get the tickets when you show up to the event. You can buy them for a whole week. You can buy them just for the day. At uh, go, Again, go and learn more about this. Porkfest.com, June 22nd through the 29th. We look forward to seeing you there. News media was in town today here in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, WMUR, the major media channel in New Hampshire, came to town to report on the war on chalk, uh, the continuing uh, chalkupy, if you will, the chalkupation going on in Keene's Central Square where... I've had a chalk enough of these uh, chalk you things. Individuals are going down on a daily basis to spread good cheer and, and love through the posting of smiley faces and hearts uh, and, and peaceful messages in downtown and sharing the chalk with anyone who would come up and speak. And I talked to uh, the reporter today about that from WMUR, uh, you know, because she's asking about, well, what about these folks from Stop Free Keen? What about the people who are unhappy about the chalk? And psh- I'm sorry if people are unhappy about chalked smiley faces, but I'm not going to stop chalking because, you know, to me, there are people whose day is improved by seeing smiley faces and peace symbols and hearts. And I want to do activism for the people who can appreciate that activism, not for the people who will get upset at, uh, at a little bit of chalk. So that's what's going on here. Okay, so how about, how about a challenging question? Okay, sure. All right. What is the mission? What is the mission behind the chalking? And why right now? Well, that's a good question. Uh, Back about a month ago, there was a DEA raid of the head shop on Main Street. There were actually coordinated raids across the country. Mm -hmm. And they happened to choose the Keene head shop, uh, Fat Stuff, on Main Street here in town. So activists, including myself, showed up with video cameras to document the raid scene. And during that, uh, Garrett Ian brought along some chalk. Chalking's been going on in Keene for a number of years. I mean, Absolutely, we've had, sure. We've had Chalk the Police Day every single year for the past few years. And and just sometimes when activists feel the inclination, they'll go down to Central Square and they'll chalk some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just the way things are. It's it, the Keene is kind of a very direct action activism scene compared to some other places where people like to kind of hide behind the scenes and you know quietly run for political office and things like that. So chalking's been going on for a while. Right. The war on chalk started with this DEA raid where where, whenever we go with chalk somewhere, it's always available for anybody who wants to pick up a piece. Mm -hmm. So the DEA is raiding this uh, head shop. People are aware of that. You know, a lot of people are stopping by. Hey, what's going on? What? The DEA are raiding? Oh, that's terrible. And, you know, all kinds of negative comments toward the DEA. It's inevitable that somebody was going to pick up some chalk and write F the DEA or some other sort of vulgarity like that. Sure. There were there were at least two vulgar chalkings that existed and several non-vulgar chalkings out in front of this place. The folks from Stop Free Keen, some of the members of Stop Free Keen, came out and they cleaned up all the chalking out in front of Fat Stuff. But there was chalk there. for the, So what you're saying is there's free speech in the chalk, right? That's right. Mark, they don't have a chalkopoly. <laughs> right? Do you like that one? Um, so, so, some, so somebody else, so somebody else could pick it up. I mean, the free keeners don't have a chalkopoly. They could, they could pick it up. No, somebody else could write a competing med- message. In fact, uh, Garrett Ian has been on video encouraging mem- the members of Stop Free Keen and the cre- the cleanup crews. Mm-hmm. Look, don't destroy these messages. Add your message to it. Take your ideas, whatever those are, right. and add them to, <laughs> as vapid as they may be. Well, that's the thing. They don't actually have ideas. I, I, they have hatred they and anger. They seem to have that. They have hatred, anger, frustration, and they want to just destroy ideas. Well, now they have more of it, right? And it's been—it's obviously been building. Sure. So it's not just like, it's not as simple as like, here's, look at us, happy, joyous, and free. With our nice pictures and our chalk, and look at these terrible people. Like there's a backstory, right? This is this has been building, and that's why I asked what I thought might be, you know, kind of a difficult question. Does the chalking of Central Square coincide with the escalating tensions um, related to uh, Free Keen versus Stop Free Keen, especially considering that Central S- Square is kind of a, a hot territory right now because that's where the People's Barbecue was it a barbecue? People's That's right, picnic yes. slash barbecue and their silent uh, protest, except for one person making a uh, uh, what do they call that sound? 
a f- <laughs> yeah, that sound. Yeah, I didn't know. What I didn't, I didn't know if it was okay to do it on the radio, but <laughs> since you did it, okay. Uh, yeah. So otherwise silent. Um, so as as tensions have built up, the, the timing of that seemed interesting. Was it to jab at them? You know, a little bit. I don't and I think don't, so. I didn't know the answer. I, I don't think so. I think the intention was to chalk out in front of the fat stuff and mm-hmm. allow yeah. people to chalk their their thoughts about the Agreed. DEA. But okay, then so they were cleaned up. Then the chalkings were cleaned up, and so inevitably. You know, we wanted to go and and occupy that It's the shot heard round the world thing, right? Like, who fired the first shot of the Revolutionary War? No one knows the answer, but everybody thinks it was the other side. And, um, of course... They they did it first, so we must respond. It's like we're it, it's like we're remote controlled by the other side. We have no choice but that's to not, not a, react. That's not it at all. It's it's uh, these people destroyed the free speech of the people who were talking, and so the the correct answer is to continue to speak. When someone shuts down your free speech, the right thing to do is continue to speak in whatever way you possibly can, rather than to allow yourself to be cowed uh, by people who are willing to engage in violence and destruction. That's how go. I feel about it. We can continue the discussion in and a And the guy's got his neck broke today. Crichton, uh, that was actually yesterday. More on the way here. Uh, That's Crichton, an important distinction. in Kentucky, you're on Free Talk Live. How's it going, guys? Hey, Crichton, go ahead. Brett, I've been waiting for you. Okay. Ooh, all right. What are you wearing? Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> go ahead. The other day, I was listening to one of your podcasts and on Phil Sucks podcast. Yeah. Where you interviewed Thaddeus Russell. Yeah, this is. And I, yeah. found, I, I very rarely find myself yelling at a recording. And yeah. I was yelling at the recording. And I'm sure you know why. It was, it was, it was his response to the idea of, of uh, the non aggression principle mm-hmm. and why he responded to the non aggression principle. But I was actually yelling at you guys because you didn't offer the proper response. He claimed that the non aggression principle did not apply. Because a hotel in New York City had a monopoly enforced by the government on the on the real estate that that hotel sits on. Sure. The, for the record, this was a hotel in Nashua, New Hampshire, where people had smoked pot at uh, a Free State Project event. So, so there was there was actually a little more detail about it that was important when he and I first went through it. But just that's a clarification. Go ahead. Here's the problem with you, what's your the proper response that you didn't offer him. Okay, is that un, undeveloped real estate, undeveloped land, is not property and never can be. Right, and I yeah. see that was the thing, and and I have to, I totally agree with you, and I have to admit that he's a clever man. He's a college professor, and one of the reasons why I wanted to have somebody else there is so that they could help me catch him when he tried to get away with stuff like that. He doesn't believe that property is legitimately owned because oh, he's a left-wing libertarian, right? Ah. So that was the problem, and I promise we'll try to we'll try to get clarity on that in future shows. All right, if we if you want to continue well, the discussion, we can come back here in a moment. Uh, hour number three is on the way. You can take control here. 855 450 free. More about the war on chalk. Rich Paul in jail. Whatever you want to talk about as well. Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking 
at mathgate.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zuckel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Wednesday, June 4th, 2014. Radio VR News. White House correspondent Mark Smith reports the president's ending his stay in Poland by marking a key milestone for democracy while defending his decision to swap five suspected terrorists for one American soldier. Speaking in Warsaw's Palace Square, the president celebrating the elections 25 years ago that brought the Solidarity Movement to power and both spelled the end of Poland's communist regime and helped smash up the Soviet bloc. And while Poland's now free and prospering, Obama's warning that Russia's actions in Ukraine show that freedom can't be taken for granted. A hearing on the deal that resulted in the release of Bo Bergdahl could be held as soon as next week. Correspondent Jerry Bodlander reports on the captured soldier. House Armed Services Committee Chairman Howard Buck McKeon has asked Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel to appear next week to testify about the trade of five Taliban officials being held at the Guantanamo Bay prison in exchange for Bo Bergdahl. McKeon says he is troubled by the release, saying the five have the blood of many on their hands. He also says the administration broke a national security law by transferring the detainees. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. Some of Sergeant Bergdahl's former comrades say he's no hero and should be investigated. National Security Correspondent Sagar Bagani reports from the Pentagon. To retired Sergeant Evan Buto, Bergdahl is at best a deserter and at worst a traitor. I know that he deserted his post. I know that he went out and seeking to find the Taliban. Buto says he has no proof Bergdahl gave the militants information, but the mere fact he might have put fellow soldiers in danger. Bergdahl knows where we're weak, and if they want to exploit that, they can. Buto says the truth needs to come out, and the Army says it will look into the circumstances surrounding Bergdahl's disappearance. Sagar Megani at the Pentagon. <laughs> Tuesday's most watched primaries produced a winner in Iowa, but it's too close to call for a race in Mississippi. Joni Ernst has won the Republican nomination for the U.S. Senate in Iowa, but it's a toss-up for State Senator Chris McDaniel and to come at U.S. Senator Thad Cochran in Mississippi. McDaniel received 49% of the vote to Cochran's 48. A gun control organization led by former Representative Gabrielle Giffords and her husband is focusing on at least 11 congressional races this year. She was shot in the head by a deranged man in 2011. Correspondent Violet Ikonomova reports on the couple's efforts. Americans for Responsible Solutions says it'll back a slate of mostly Democratic incumbents who've supported efforts to expand background checks for gun buyers. The group has raised more than $14 million since it was founded a year and a half ago. Candidates set to get some of that money include Democratic Senators Mark Udall of Colorado, Mary Landrieu of Louisiana, and Kay Hagan of North Carolina. The group will back at least two Republicans as well. Violet Ekonomova, Washington. Correspondent Todd Richmond reports two 12-year-old girls from Waukesha, Wisconsin are being charged as adults for attempted murder and a stabbing attack with a bizarre motive. The two girls told investigators they'd been planning for months to stab their 12-year-old friend to death to please a fictional character called the Slender Man. According to a criminal complaint, both girls have been planning for months to kill their 12-year-old friend to earn a position as proxies with Slender Man, a fictional character popular on horror websites. After they had killed their friend, they had planned to flee to Slenderman's mansion in the forest in northern Wisconsin. 
Ford is giving car buyers a glimpse of the future. Correspondent Carlotta Bradley reports on the lighter Ford Fusion. Ford's prototype lightweight Fusion sedan is 800 pounds lighter than a regular Fusion thanks to greater use of aluminum and other materials. The instrument panel is made of carbon fiber and nylon instead of steel. The rear window is made from the same plastic used on cell phones. The car also has a smaller engine. Ford won't sell the car anytime soon, partly because lighter materials are more expensive, but the industry is actively researching lighter materials to save fuel. Ford and supplier Magna developed the car with a $10 million grant from the Energy Department. The car will be used for durability and crash tests. I'm Carlotta Bradley. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Radio VR. This is the voice of Russia. Turning to Capitol Hill, House Republicans are considering their own version of the Violence Against Women Act. The GOP hopes their new No Punch Pretty Lady Bill will finally help the party appeal to female voters. No punch, no rape. Pass law. Women give big smiles at us again. Big votes. Among its statutes, the bill would introduce harsher penalties for putting fists to women's face and proposes that if ladies smell nice like flowers, no smash lady. And what if pretty lady Al-Qaeda? What if she death panel? What if she Benghazi? Yes, in some cases, punch lady. In addition to increasing funding to shelters for crying ladies hurt from doing sex with bad guys, the bill also includes a clause complimenting the nation's women for losing weight. And in other headlines, Lady Gaga kidnaps Commissioner Gordon. A man who likes to move it, move it is still searching for the perfect song. And Rod Stewart is mistaken for an elderly aunt. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Oops, there we go. You can bring up anything. Toll free number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. With you in the studio tonight, Ian here. Brett. And Mark. Brett's here, courtesy of the School Sucks Project at schoolsucksproject.com. As we go back to the phones and your calls and thoughts, we can talk more about our friend Rich Paul arrested earlier today. The war on chalk still continuing here in Keene, New Hampshire. As we go to the phones, Crichton is in Kentucky. Crichton you, had, uh, Crichton, you had called in about a conversation that had happened on the School Sucks Project with Brett and his guest, who was on uh, Thaddeus Russell. Yes. Who is the author of uh, an interesting book. I haven't read it, but we've talked to him about the, the book, which is called uh, I'm not Renegade History. A Renegade History of the United States. And uh, this was actually a book that I read. There, there, were, there were two things that made me think more positively of the activism that goes on here in Keene. Mm, okay. Even though I am still admittedly undecided in trying to uh, understand better the motives behind it. First one was obviously Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Yes. Changed my Great attitude movie. very much. Had Derek Watch on the show. Watch it for free at victimlesscrimespree.com. Yes. And uh, I often refer to Derek as... Our most popular guest ever. Is that true by any metrics? I don't know, but it just seems like the right way to describe him. Didn't the show with him on it get something like 20,000 downloads uh, right out the gate? About 50. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. So, Jeez, have we ever had a show that no. got 50,000 no, downloads? No, I don't think ever. And I, I don't have many that have. Uh, and I don't know if that's the most, but Derek is great, and I highly recommend that film. Second thing was Thaddeus Russell's book, A Renegade History of the United States, where obviously he's not lionizing or uh, you know making heroes out of these mostly scummy people throughout history by just doing whatever they wanted whenever they wanted mm -hmm. um, brought about change. You know, he talks about gangsters, hookers, uh, that kind of crowd. And those are not heroes, but the takeaway is that you don't push freedom forward by being a political candidate in most cases, right? You don't push freedom forward by holding a sign. You identify the prohibition that you want to change and you go out and you do that thing, right? So one of the things that I, in light of that experience, look very positively on is the, the 420 rallies mm -hmm. that were held in Keene. Now, I'm not a pot smoker myself, but if that was going on today, 
I I would like to think that I would be there and be supporting that awesome. because that's how that's how change happens. But there was some sort of conflict you had with Thaddeus and Crichton. You are on the line. Yep. Can you can you briefly recap what the the conflict was? Yes, most of the conflict was that Thaddeus Russell does not believe that personal property is a real thing. Um, and his, his big argument was that real estate is not a real thing, which I agree with. Uh, but that's the actual dirt. You can't, you can't actually own a parcel of land, but you can own the improvements in it that you perform. The problem with owning like a house, even though it's property, is that you cannot, mono- you cannot exercise your right to that property without the monopoly of the, on the parcel of property that sits on. Um, and that makes it complex. However, he doesn't believe that property is naturally occurring. And I can prove very simply that it is. Okay, prove it. Go to, go to, you can go to any uh, preschool in the world. And you walk in there and you find a little kid playing with, with a toy. You calmly walk over there without saying anything to him and try to take that toy from him. What is the word in English that you're going to hear? Uh, no. Probably mine. Um, it's mine. Right. Well, I would and like to point matter. out that I would po- like to point out that uh, preschoolers and young children are pretty good at identifying what's their property, but very, very bad at what, identif- what is identifying mm-hmm. your property. Yeah, that's true. That's, so- that's true. But you got to keep in mind that their time frame is very short. They they walk they crawl in there or walk in there and they grab a toy. They're homesteading that toy for the moment. But it's very real property to them, and that is what everything about property is based upon. When well, they're it's always fun to, it, to mess with people sure. who uh, claim they don't believe in property. Like, oh, great, I'd like to take your car then for a joyride. That's but, cool with you, right? But there's there's an important distinction that needs to be made here. We need to parse a philosophical argument that we've made for years and other people on LRN have been making uh, for a long time. We need to parse philosophical arguments uh, from historical arguments. Thaddeus Russell is a historian, and he's making a historical argument in that the United States— history of the United States, property rights have been allegedly enforced by a monopoly government, right? As far oh, as and inf- that's another thing, yes. That is historically true, but why is that? Is it because government creates the monopoly or that governments take over functions of the, that the public insists upon if they're going to be the only have a monopoly enforced, these are the things that you have to enforce. The, they, the, the latter, very much the latter, and uh, the schools it's, is it's a great example of that. Well, trash, trash pickup, I think, is even a better example because here in the United States, we don't have any place that doesn't have public schools, but we do have places that don't have government trash pickup. Right, Keene, and New Hampshire. Keene, New Hampshire, and I don't know how many other places in New Hampshire. You've got if you want to get your trash picked up. You, you don't want to take it, you, some, You're going to have to get one of the trash companies to or do it. Or take it yourself. And honestly, the cost is, a, is 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 commensurate. It's just that you don't have to deal with all the little trash rules that you that that I had to deal with uh, in Sarasota when we left there. Costs are similar, so um, y- the government can run run at a monopoly. Somehow they can uh, they, they can't they're not cutting costs in any way, shape, or form. But people still demand their trash be picked up. Sometimes they'll accept a monopoly doing it. Sometimes they want competition. Sometimes they want a monopoly doing it. Exactly. It's a question of causation versus uh, correlation. The correlation that governments enforce property rights pretty much anywhere in the world doesn't mean that that's where the property rights came from. Right. And we're and blending the. I think we're blending the arguments a, l- a little bit, right? So most of most of philosophy is pre- prescriptive, right? And what Thaddeus Russell does, even though, yes, certainly he has his own philosophy that he brings to his work, is more observational. And sometimes philosophy is even observational. So I I don't think, I think he has a message that has value to him in his work. But honestly, he even admitted that he didn't know that much about um, libertarian theory. Right. He he identifies with left libertarians because he's so disgusted by the traditional progressive left. Right. But I still think right. he's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring him on the show is obviously, number one, it would generate debate. Check. And number <laughs> two, it would help uh, introduce his you know world. The, this academic historian world uh, where where he very much is a rebel himself. 
to, uh, you know, a message that I think he might identify with through the subject of school, which is how he and I originally connected and started getting along uh, at Liberty Forum a couple of years ago. So that, yeah, I mean, that's my only mission. Go ahead. He's an excellent historian, and I have had his, read his book, and it is an excellent book. Crichton, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Tom in Maryland. You're on Free Talk Live. Tom. Good morning, gentlemen. I called about the other two topics, but I've got a comment on the last caller. Certainly, I believe in, in property. I uh, do not believe that there's a legal basis for taxing uh, private property, and I think that's where uh, the governments get people oftentimes with their terminology. You know, legalese, uh, for all intents and purposes, really is another language, and real estate and uh, many of the words they use are are, are terms of, of commerce, and if you're not conducting business, using your property for earning a, a living, uh, you certainly have the right to have a roof over your head and and to uh, have a place to lay your head down at night. And I don't know if you have a right to you, that. Well, according to the Constitution, you do. No, you, have the right to, you have the right to own it. I don't think you have the right to it. Stand by, Tom. We can bring you back here in a moment. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I like the idea of people who want a roof over their head having a roof over their head. Yes. I support the idea of people having a nice warm place to stay and that's dry. But I don't know if they have a right to it. I don't think that's the case. Uh, and we can talk about that and why that's the case in a moment here. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 here on Free Talk Live. What if you could combine the two most powerful diet ingredients into one incredible weight loss super pill? We've done just that. For the first time ever, the miracle fat burner in a bottle, Raspberry Ketone, has been combined with pure Garcinia Cambogia, described as the holy grail of weight loss, to bring you the world's most powerful diet pill. Get your phone ready, because we're releasing free bottles to the first 100 callers. But wait, we haven't just combined the two most powerful weight loss ingredients. We've combined the six most powerful ingredients. Green coffee bean, African mango, moringa, and glucomonin. All the hottest clinically proven weight loss ingredients combined into one fat-shedding super pill. We call it the Skinny Six Super Supplement, and it's available for the very first time. Be one of the first 100 callers, and we'll rush you a free bottle. Call 1-800-514-2945. Find out how to get your free bottle. 1-800-514-2945. 1-800-514-2945. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. 
Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything here toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Maybe you're kicking back at home enjoying a cup of coffee. Is it BuzzBox coffee? If not, you're missing out. Yeah, well, you can get a free pound of BuzzBox coffee to try it out if you'd like by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's great coffee. It's uh, 100% organic. It's shade-grown. It's top 1% grade Arabica beans. And... It's delicious. I drink BuzzBox coffee um, every morning, or most every morning, I would say. And BuzzBox is great. It's 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 premium coffee, um, and it's competitively priced with other premium brands. But one thing they do that other folks don't do is is that they make it possible for partners like Free Talk Live to offer microloans to people around the world. Not only does BuzzBox have a coffee co-op so that Poor people where they grow coffee can join their coffee co-op and work to get their own coffee farm over time. But they allow us to help people with a variety of things. Uh, there was, uh, for instance, a story about a woman named Yolanda who got a microloan uh, through BuzzBox and was able to get the, the equipment she needed to expand her taco business from making $75 a month to $300 a month. That's an incredible increase in what she's making. That's a four times increase. Imagine if you were able to increase your income by four times. She's sending her kids to school. Their family's having a better life, all because of people like you who are buying your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. You go there, you get your first pound free, you sign up for the subscription in order to do so. You can cancel that subscription anytime. If you decide you don't like the coffee, you don't like the program, that's cool. Thanks for trying. It's coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, we can continue here. 855 450 free. We've got Tom in Maryland on the line with us. And Tom, uh, you didn't have enough time to really get all your thoughts out, so go ahead now. We were talking about property. Uh, yes. I, I don't want you to get me wrong as far as having a right. I didn't mean that it should be provided to you, but I think we all can agree. And most people recognize and know that the Constitution states that we all have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There you go. And so you need a roof over your head in order to attain that. Now, if you can— Well, so for purchase- some people, that's happiness. For others, living out in the open is happiness. And certainly the ability to pursue having a roof over your head certainly should be your freedom. For the record, it was originally life, liberty, and the pursuit of property, too, mm-hmm. by the way. It just sounds so callous. Really? Uh, yeah. Interesting. Well, it, even living out in the open, uh, if you prefer that, uh, certainly you're going to have the land. You don't want to be taxed for simply uh, laying your head down, even if it's on the dirt. Um, and I, that's why I've always advocated for folks to really know your rights and know the, the law in your particular area so that that you know when your rights are being violated or when you're being taken advantage of. You know, so many Mm -hmm. people have died fighting to get these rights for us. Uh, we, we feel guilty if we're not aware of them, at least. Well, I never, uh, I just want to jump in. I don't, 
Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, who are who are the people that, that died keeping, fighting, or, or sorry, died fighting for or keeping? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I, I'm thinking originally of, of the founding fathers. Um, they certainly secured a geographical area to call the United States of America uh, a nation that uh, – they hoped, uh, I believe, to have passed on to their offspring and so on and so forth. So, you know, we're in a position where we can purchase land and uh, we can be on that land, but I do believe that uh, we're being taken advantage of as far as taxation of that property because we really don't own it if we can lose it simply by not having the funds to pay property taxes in a particular year, even if we've been there for decades. Sure. But, um, yeah, and property taxes are interesting. They came down from uh, the concept of quit rents that uh, were it was money or, in most cases, really just uh, fruit of the land, you know, the, the crop that you grew there, that was given to the Lord. They got a percentage, you know, this sort of sharecropping thing. Uh, they got a percentage of what you produced, and there was an amount that you had to pay on an annual basis. And... It's really funny how uh, you know we got free, but the concept of quit rents continued on. You exchanged uh, one lord uh, three thousand miles away for three thousand lords one mile away, and that's what's the difference? Well, you're 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 very um, uh, you're catching on to something there, um, you know, uh, and. I should point out that that's why I believe we're being tricked. Um, now, if you contract with the government, there's numerous ways to contract that people don't realize are actually contracting. Someone mentioned about trash pickup before. Um, you address your home. You do any number. You list it as real estate and don't contest it as not being real estate but being private property. And that's you know, that gets back to knowing what the laws are and what your rights are. You know, I've heard now, about the, uh, the these claims before that have you're, you tried it? you're secretly contracting with the government in certain instances. Can you give a specific example of that? Uh, well, a, a license, for example, is, is basically tacit compliance and agreement, and it could be considered a contract. It could um, be, but you're under, you're under threat, duress, uh, duress and coercion in order to acquire that license. Is there and is there a way to address that? What I think more importantly, like I agree with that idea. I agree with what's been said, but is there a way to address that? That you know, a man or a woman needs to get around in a car these days, and uh, you know they've kind of got you in a place where life can be very difficult if you don't do their paperwork. So, is I, I mean, is there a strategy for avoiding that? Well, you know, I, I use simple logic and and the rule of law. You know, that which is 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 done uh, can can be undone by by the same means. Um, you don't have to remain in the contract. And don't get me wrong. Really, I, I have because I would I would I love to get rid of the uh, government driver's license. I've been forced under threat to have and not be arrested and thrown into a cage for not having that piece of plastic when I'm driving around. Well, there's some battles that are worth fighting and some that are not. I don't choose to fight. <laughs> so. Well, look, I mean, come on. It's not really a contract, right? Because a contract has to be an agreement between two parties. There has to be a meeting of the minds. They don't treat it like a contract. No, they treat it like they own you, and you'll do as they say, and you can tell them I don't consent, but they don't care. They're going to go ahead and put you in. Whoa, I whoa, I, whoa, you can't arrest me. I didn't sign your contract. I charge $10,000 a day for incarceration. <laughs> hey, thanks, Tom. I appreciate hearing from you tonight. If you want to give me lashes, it's 50000 No, don't get me wrong. I support freedom to travel, uh, civil disobedience. I do. And I love these guys like Jay Noon out of uh, Massachusetts, yes. who really has driven around his, seems like his whole adult life with no driver's license whatsoever. I mean, the fact is, he's been put in a jail cell a few times because of that. And uh, I mean, he's still with us. He's gotten out of those jail cells. And it's been a, it's an interesting road that you go down. But you don't just get to tell the government goons, oh, no, it's okay, officer friendly. I I didn't sign for your license, so therefore none of your rules apply to me. Sorry. Right. It's just not going to get you out of the uh, the handcuffs. It's not. 855 450 free. But I'd love to see more freedom to travel activism. I'd love to see more people bringing you know, cases to court and challenging the system in whatever way they think is best. 
855-453. Hey, speaking of court, there's some breaking news here in New Hampshire, which is very exciting, about the president of the Free State Project. It's Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Never, ever send a follow-up email asking, Did you get my email? Email 101. If it didn't bounce back undeliverable, it got where you sent it. And avoid transmedia pestering, like calling to ask, Did you get my email? Or emailing to say, I left you a voicemail. If your emails and voicemails aren't being acknowledged, your problem isn't technology, it's technique. Is your message concise and understandable? Have you boiled it down to seem as relevant as possible to the recipient? In other words, is it the opposite of spam or junk mail? All of this really matters if you're a job seeker. But even if you're not, with money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you like by dialing toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We also have Skype. You can Skype into the show. Our username there is lrn.fm. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that uh, we share with you on the site 
over at freetalklive.com. Check it out. I'm excited to head off to Chicago. It's going to be after the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's in July uh, the 19th and 20th. We're going to the McCormick Place, Chicago McCormick Place, uh, the South Building, for the North American Bitcoin Conference. There's going to be lots of speakers there. Um, and uh, all you have to do is go to btcchicago.com. The list of speakers has been growing, and Ooh, I am... Tell me more. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's uh, all kinds of different folks that are going to be there, and I am looking forward to it. Of course, uh, we've listed off uh, in the past uh, Kathy Reisenwitz, uh, Roger Veer, Jeff Berwick, uh, but they've, they've made some new announcements here, and I'm uh, trying to get it because my page refreshed on me. Um, there's uh, some of these names, uh, by the way. They're the Again, folks BTC are, Chicago.com? It is. Uh, some of these folks are, are somewhat foreign, and I, I, I hesitate to try the, the names. Have you uh, run into that problem in the past? No, I, I usually just go for it. Just just give it a shot? Well, um, there's uh, Christina Gorlick from Cloud Hashing, Brock Pierce from... Uh, Come on, these aren't hard. Give no, me these hard aren't. I've, I've actually scrolled past one. How about Marco Centauri? Is that good enough for you? Jeffrey that Tucker will good. be there from Liberty.me. Hey, Me. all right. Yep. Reggie Middleton, uh, Boom and Bus Blog. Wow. I'm excited to see getting, these folks. It's expanding. This is great. Yep. More and more people. It's going to be... It's going to be... I think it's going to be a big event. I think there's Well, usually be... the more announcements are made with events like this, the prices could go up as they make more announcements. So you might want to get your tickets sooner rather than later. Of course, Vitalik Buterin is going to be there from Ethereum. And the last North American Bitcoin conference, they expected about 500 people down in uh, Miami Beach. They got 2,500. Now, this is Chicago, much larger metro. This is downtown inside the loop. Is it the same organizer? Same organizer, oh, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. It's going to be a great event. Uh, it was a great event, and I'm going to be hopefully doing some emceeing. Maybe you'll be doing some too, Ian. Uh, whatever, we, whatever we've got to do to make this event great, we're going to be doing a live broadcast from there. So um, if you're a listener in Chicago, you want to get a chance to come see Free Talk Live done live, we're going to be doing it there. BTCChicago.com. You can pay in Bitcoin if you wish. If you just want to learn about Bitcoin, you don't have any, you can pay in cash. BTCChicago.com. All right, so there's still stuff on the table to talk about here, including a ridiculous school release related story that Mark has uh, brought in this evening. Plus, Brett is here from the School Sucks Project. But there's breaking news. It is so breaking that I haven't even hit the publish button yet on the story. Actually, I just hit it. I apologize. I've just hit the publish button on the story at freekeen.com, where Free State Project President Carla Garrick has won again. So we had talked about her most recent win, which was just a couple weeks ago, maybe even a week ago, where the news had come down from the First Circuit Court of Appeals, the Federal First Circuit Court, that reaffirmed the Glick decision, this sort of historic decision that happened a couple years ago, which said that as a videographer, you, or just a, you know, a member of the public, you have the ability to record a government police officer in the performance of his duties in a public place. Like, in, it's, it's an almost incontrovertible right there was some play in the wording of the judges in that case, but it was pretty clear if the cops are out on the street doing something, you can record them. Uh, they were actually clear in uh, saying that they, we've already said this, and the next time we're really yes. going to stick it to you. So this time is the next time. Uh, this is Carla Garrick's case, uh, and it uh, and she was arrested for recording video of the police, a police traffic stop. They charged her with wiretapping. They dropped those wiretapping charges before trial. So Carla filed a countersuit in civil court against the Weir Police Department, the town of Weir, New Hampshire, uh, as well as the Weir uh, Police, Weir, the town, the, the police, and the individual officers involved. So what happened was the town, of course, you know, sticking up for their men in the police department, they, uh, filed, they filed a motion the to dismiss. The organization known as the town, not the people of the town. Thank you. Yes, the town uh, government guys filed a motion to dismiss in court, basically saying, well, these cops have qualified immunity. They made this arrest, but yeah, they shouldn't have made the arrest, but they didn't know. And so, uh, you, you know, they shouldn't be held liable for their actions. That was appealed to these, um, the de sorry, the decision was made by the district court that um, actually the officers were liable, that they did not have this qualified immunity from being uh, prosecuted, wow. from being held liable. That Huge. That was the federal district court that decided that. Weir then appealed the district court decision. So the, in uh, court terms, it's called an interlocutory appeal, meaning that within the case itself, a decision that is made is being appealed. So the case itself, her suit against Weir PD was placed on hold 
while this interlocutory appeal was filed with the First Circuit Court. And so the Weir PD was asking the First Circuit Court, hey, we think that the district court made a mistake in, in uh, making it so these officers were no longer immune. What do you think? That's when the First Circuit Court came back with this ruling that said, said "Ah, contraire." <laughs> no, the First Circuit Court agreed with the District Court. The right. First Circuit Court says, actually, the uh, District Court was correct. These officers do not have qualified immunity, and they may be held individually responsible for violating this woman's First Amendment rights to record the police. This was a pretty big decision, right? Was, and we keep telling here. police this, and they keep doing the crap that they keep doing. That's right. Um, in fact, I told the police that in Palmer, Massachusetts, about the Glick decision right before they arrested me for holding a video camera in a public place. And I won that case. Uh, that uh, was also settled. Anyway, back to Carla's story. So First Circuit Court of Appeals makes this decision. And, of course, the inevitable question was, well, were they going to appeal this to the Supreme Court? Because that's, that's where you go next. Right. right. They did not appeal to the Supreme Court. They called it, a, uh, they called it quits. After losing the case at the appeals court, it was then remanded back to the district court. Because remember, it was an interlocutory appeal. So they, they basically paused the case at the district court level while the appeal happened, which took a year or two. Then finally... You mean the justice doesn't have a terrible swift sword? Finally, it goes back to district court where they were to go to trial, where she was suing them. Right. So that hadn't happened yet. The full trial for this suit hadn't happened and it will not happen now the breaking news is that the town of weir has settled the case out of court and there's no restrictions but by the way on the settlement a lot of cases when you get a settlement from the state they will put restrictions on yeah can't talk about it and or whatever. Was, right they'll yeah. say you cannot reveal the terms you cannot reveal the details of this no restrictions on this at all Fifty-seven thousand five hundred dollars is the total awarded to carla garrick and I imagine her attorneys will be getting a piece of that, but uh, they deserve it because they did an awesome job. I imagine uh, she's happy to, with to this give it case. to them too. So congratulations to Carla Garrick, the president of the Free State Project, for whomping uh, these cops in uh, the town of Weir in court. And by the way, I believe there's another case pending against these very same cops, and if at least one other case, because I know there were two other activists who've been arrested by these these same police uh, officers and or the same people in the same department. So this may be one of multiple they settlements just coming. They just keep doing it. They just keep doing well, it. Well, it's been a couple there, of years since someone was arrested. There is in the a, weird, there's but. a case from t there's today. A police officer in Florida goes and says, you can't film us from your car. Oh, yeah. You could be masturbating in here. <laughs> I mean, they, they'll say Wait, anything. the cop could be masturbating? Because no. that's happened before. Yeah, indeed. Um, th they'll say, you can't hold that camera up. It could be a gun. They'll say all kinds of dumb things. Yeah, they're, they're, I've seen some video recently of them being pretty aggressive um, in cities with people who are who are doing it, cops getting right in the face, threatening oh, assault. Yeah, so um, apparently the you know they might not know about the existence of the Glick decision, or no, they just certainly. don't care. That's well, true. That's I true. What they probably don't know is that they can be held individually responsible. Well, these officers are lucky that they were bailed out by the town in this case, yeah, right? Yeah, the, the town because, decided to bail them out. Right, because the town could have thrown them under the bus and could have gone ahead to trial and allowed them to fend for themselves in I'll this case. I'll bet you the town, the, the town's people didn't get to vote on this. I bet you're right about that. I'll bet you this wasn't uh, dealt with. I don't know how it was dealt with, but I can tell you that I'll bet you it didn't come up to a vote for the uh, where, uh, you know, individual people saying, you know, do you want to pay for these police officers to harangue and harass people with cameras, or do you want to have them pay for it themselves? All right, so we'll come back with more here. Take control of the airwaves at 855-450. Free great news coming out yes. of uh, the Free State Project with the president being awarded over $57,000 in this case where she was arrested wrongfully. Hey, it's the wrongful arrest, Mark, that we were talking about earlier. Here it is. <laughs> Very rarely happens, but it's happened. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase... 
10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Men who want intimacy and pleasure back in their love life don't ask if, they ask when. So men, spark up your love life, get pleasure and intimacy back, and please your special lady with Epic Nights. Epic Nights is a safe, revolutionary herbal sexual formula for men that combines ancient herbal ingredients and modern science to significantly support stamina, performance, and pleasure. Men, Epic Nights is a proven 100% natural product that works first time, every time, even after consuming alcohol. And you won't hear any of those cliche disclaimers Man, because Epic Nights will not give you unwanted side effects, but Epic Nights will allow you to give your partner what they deserve. Epic Nights is guaranteed as one of the most effective male enhancers on the web or will refund your purchase 100%. Buy Epic Nights at buyepicnights.com, spelled B U Y E P I C N I G H T S.com, or call 1 877 330 1120. 877 330 1120. Epic Nights, one pill, one Epic Night. Free Talk Live. When you speak of the federal government, uh, I can tell you a few things about it because I survived 34 years of it before I retired two years ago. Mm. You and I'm sorry to hear about that. my sanity. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Who did you work for? I worked uh, for the Department of Defense. It's a criminal enterprise from top to bottom. What? There was unethical behavior going on there. Mm. Uh, there were people doing criminal things. I mean, outright larceny, graft. Uh, I could just go on. Yeah, and that's and, just your bureaucracy. It's the yeah. same way everywhere else in every other government department. And I tell you, this is a microcosm. If it's that way where I was, you know the entire federal government's that way from the very top to the very bottom. Mm. When we talk to former police officers, they've told us that usually... I did the, that too for it, about seven years out there. They've, they've told us that in their experience, usually the worst rise up through the ranks. Would you say that's accurate from your experience? Absolutely. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 you can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever's on your mind toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And uh, you can join us online. You can also join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Do you need focus? Feeling fatigued? Trying to get the extra edge where it counts? There's so much going on all at once in our lives these days. It seems like we can't keep track of everything, and it can be tiring. Don't you wish there was something that you could uh, get yourself out of the rut with, get the focus you're looking for, and help you get things done? Well, there might be. Look into Modafinil from modup.net. 
Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about how modafinil from modup.net is making the difference in their work, giving them that critical edge that they need. Check out modup.net, M-O-D-U-P.net, and look into it for yourself. They've got fast delivery worldwide for guaranteed high-quality modafinil at an amazing price, and modup.net is a Bitcoin community supporter. You can order from modup.net with Bitcoin and get a 33% discount. To make the deal even better, use the code FTL, and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. Again, the code FTL at modup.net. And remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It is your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So check it out for yourself. Learn at uh, modup.net and get great service at a great price. That's modup.net with code FTL. As we continue here, 855 450 free. Our friend Rich Paul still sitting in a jail cell. It's been a it's been a busy day here in New Hampshire with uh, Rich Paul being arrested, the news media coming to town to report on this war on chalk that has been going on here. And now, with the, on the good news side, uh, Carla Garrick, the president of the Free State Project, winning her case ultimately that uh, she was arrested for wiretapping and uh, the Circuit Court of Appeals decided that police officers cannot claim ignorance about this anymore. They cannot claim that arresting someone for holding a video camera in public, uh, recording the police, they can't claim they didn't know, well, gosh, we didn't know that was a First Amendment rights violation. Well, we shouldn't be held responsible for this. Well, the court said they should be held responsible for it, and that's why the town settled for $57,000 with the Free State Project president. And it's great news, and hopefully we'll see more uh, wins in the, in the future for liberty activists. We've seen several here, in, even in the Keene area uh, as well, so it's been a good last couple of years. I think the activists are at uh, six wins for seven cases recently. The um, the one loss that I can think of is... is the Rich Paul? Uh, I wasn't thinking about Rich Paul. Okay. I didn't really... I, I don't consider that an activist case, honestly. What? No, I don't. I Why think he not? Was, he was making a living doing what he was doing. So the activism came into play when he got caught. Yes, but that doesn't have to do with having a good case. That doesn't have to do with choosing to, t- to bring something to trial. I don't understand your point. Well, in many cases, many many situations, activists have attempted to confront, uh, b- you know, the government mm-hmm. and to sort of bring an issue uh, to light. With Rich, the goal of it showing up in court. Right. Yeah. Rich Paul wanted to be able to get, uh, you know, his his reason for taking it to trial was to be able to try jury nullification. Now, that part of it is well, still in the works. Well, he also didn't want works. to take a plea deal either. Uh, fine. Um, right. but, but that part is still in the works, whether or not the jury nullification was done properly or Correct. improperly it's being in this appealed. case. So that really leaves him out of the situation. Which is activism, by the way. The appealing of that case is also activism. I, I'm not disagreeing with okay. any of those statements, Ian. I'm not saying he's I'm not sorry. an activist. I thought you said it wasn't an activist Rich Paul case. was selling pot or allegedly selling pot for money. So? Okay? It's his job. That's not activism. It's he didn't claim that that was activism. I'm not saying he did. I'm telling you that wow, <laughs> these why are don't you acti- settle down, man. <laughs> why are you why shouting? Don't you listen? Because you you're said not it listening. wasn't an activist case, and it absolutely is an activist case. I, I he didn't don't, take the plea deal. I'm having a little trouble understanding. I think what he was doing was definitely agorism, right? So uh-huh. there's, you know, thumbs up for that. And then when uh, a huge uh, penalty was held over him, unless he cooperated, it became activism. Are you but, saying because he didn't start out the activity with the intention of having that showdown? That's what I mean. With the inten- He didn't okay. go with the intention. Ian, when you brought your he camera— knew it could when you brought, Let me finish what I'm saying. When you brought your camera into the Palmer court, you were going with the intention of filming things, and when they um, said, you can't bring that in here, you didn't back down. Whereas Rich Paul That's, had— There's a- no difference. I mean, I was doing my job as a videographer, and he was doing his job as a pot salesman. All right, fine. Then activists are six for eight. He's the first person who will tell you he wasn't doing activism by selling the cannabis, although you could argue that uh, you know he was fine. connecting with then cannabis. He- not, and, then it's not an activist case. 
I don't know why you're so uh, I have ha- se- having a hard time understanding this. If it weren't an activist case, he would have taken the plea deal like most people. But he didn't take the plea deal. He faced down 100 years in prison to make a point, to make a point about being an activist, about not crumbling and snitching on your friends because he was uh, told by the FBI they wanted him to go and wear a wire into the Keene Activist Center. He refused to do that. And then he, you know, so he refused to roll over on his, uh, his activist friends. He also refused used to take the plea deal, which, by the way, was offered to him a day before trial. He was offered no jail time whatsoever to take this felony conviction. He went and faced down 100 years in prison anyway on principle. That man is more of an activist than you have any clue about, sir. I said it's not an activist case. I didn't say Rich Paul wasn't an activist. I know you love activists so much that that no one can say anything that even sounds remotely close. I shut your damn mouth. I would let you speak the whole way through. Yeah, that's right. You little bitch ass motherfucker. Oh, I can't believe you just said that. You are getting dumped out there, sir. Very unprofessional. Very unprofessional. You need a bitch. Wow. Wow. I cannot dump that, and uh, I don't know what to really say to that. Very immature. Very angry man. And I apologize to our listeners uh, for that outburst. You can just leave the studio right now. Don't say a single word. Just leave the studio. So to, to call that... Not activism is tremendously insulting. I didn't say that. You are done today, today, sir. Oh, that's right. You, you are just done. Go ahead and preach from your side. Yeah, I'm going to continue to talk because you are out of control. So just leave the studio, and we'll continue the show here. Brett, um, so activism. Yeah, I think that when somebody is facing prison time and or any amount of jail time, and they don't take a plea deal. That that is an activist thing to do. That is a very activist thing to do. Okay, so to start at the beginning, I believe, and let's just go through the whole thing, agorism, which I think is very noble, is not activism. Now I, I tend to agree. I am sitting here in a difficult position because I don't know enough about what Rich did once the... Um, this offer was made to him. And it wasn't, It's let's not call it an offer. It's a threat, mm-hmm. right? You will do this or you will get this. So as much as I wished I could have intervened in what just, hap- just happened here, I was missing information that, that I needed to be properly informed, right? Now, I agree with what Mark is saying that if the, the intention is not there from the beginning— it's hard to call it activism if it's just some point later during the you know the process it's like oh I'm doing activism now. But if you think about what Rich was actually up against and the risks that he took, it's pretty hard to call it anything else. Now Absolutely. But because it's non-cooperation and non-cooperation is very similar to civil disobedience in that when you are aggressed against by the state, whether it's getting a parking ticket or looking at 100 years in prison for selling cannabis, mm-hmm. when you're aggressed against by the state, you get to decide. Do you do what everybody else does and pony up the cash and plead guilty, or do you do an activist thing and not take the plea deal and go to trial and clog the system? Totally an activism thing to do, even if it's just a parking ticket, even if it's just a $5 parking ticket, doing something unusual, challenging the state, challenging the system, standing up for your rights, that's, I think, a heroic thing for him to do. I agree. I agree in that case, you know. And, and, and again, it doesn't have to do with the intentions prior to. Yes, civil disobedience is kind of a more pure activism, I guess you could say, in that from the beginning you intended to sort of call out this issue and see what the police uh, response to it would be. Yeah, I, I get that, and I have a lot of respect for civil disobedience, but I also have a lot of respect for non-cooperation. I was recently arrested. I was not expecting to get arrested for an ID card violation where I'm facing two years in, in jail as a result of that. Wasn't expecting that at all. I didn't go and get an identification card you know, under a different name because I wanted to be an activist. That was just something I wanted to do, and they decided it was criminal. So instead of taking whatever plea deal they're going to offer me, I'm going to trial on this because I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So again, I'd like to apologize for uh, my co-host outburst. I'm sure he will be very sorry about it uh, tomorrow when he manages to cool down. 
very, very sad night here on Free Talk Live. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Brett, for, for being here. My pleasure. From the School Sucks Project. And we'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a oh. license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, well, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. And, of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business. But Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, June 4th, 2014. Silver is trading at $18.80 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,246 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $638. Antiwar.com reports, the gold line keeps shifting in the P5 plus one talks with Iran. And after Iran did everything they were asked in the interim deal, the expectation of having a civilian nuclear program with some manner of self-sufficiency at all is suddenly being presented as a sticking point that could kill a deal. U.S. and other Western officials have been conceding for a while that Iran has every right to a civilian nuclear program and uranium enrichment to a level well short of weapons grade. Even though weapons grade is 90%, Iran agreed to give up its 20% enrichment and is now only doing 3.5% enrichment. And the line keeps shifting. Now, Iran's baseline expectation that they'd be allowed to continue to produce 3.5% uranium in quantities needed to fuel the Bushehr nuclear power plant is being condemned by the West as unrealistic. Though Western officials are presenting the enrichment as a weapons risk, there is no credible basis for that claim, and rather the big driving concern seems to be from Russia who built the plant and has a 10-year contract to provide fuel. The fuel contract is pretty lucrative and would be even more so if Iran lacks self-sufficiency after the 10 years is over, meaning there is an economic interest in keeping Iran's plants dependent on them going forward. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760 The National Taxpayers Union reports 
If you didn't like the 2008 farm bill before, get ready for an IRS-sized dose of malarkey. The massive bill, officially enacted to support farmers, but in reality does more to benefit the billion-dollar agribusiness industry, has paved the way for the IRS to come after your tax refund, even if you have good standing with Uncle Sam. According to the Washington Post, Congress's enacted farm bill repealed a statute of limitations on old debts owed to the feds. Historically, the statute prevented the Treasury Department from coming after debtors after 10 years. Now, taxpayers across the country are seeing the effects and the government aims to get $1.1 billion. The article mentions one woman who suddenly had no tax return because the IRS determined that her family was overpaid for her father's death benefit, which had been outstanding since 1960. IRS officials are not sure specifically who was overpaid, so they chose her to make up the difference. In all, the IRS has collected $424 million in new debt, i.e. debt that has only recently been available to collect in the wake of the statute's repeal. So, to reiterate, a bill presumably designed to protect the agriculture industry included a new power enabling federal officials to take money from Americans who have indirectly benefited from a payout beyond 10 years ago, but those officials don't really have the records to back up their claims. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot F-P-P-Radio dot com. The CBC reports, Egypt's former military chief Abdel Fattah el-Sisi was officially declared the next president of Egypt Tuesday, winning an election to replace the Islamic leader he removed from the power last year. The election commission announced the results of last week's election, saying el-Sisi won a landslide victory with 96.9% of the votes cast, with turnout around 47.5%. LCC garnered 23.78 million votes, while his sole rival, leftist politician Hamdim Sabahi, got 318,000 votes, much lower than the 1.4 million invalid ballots cast. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Is your child defiant, independent, annoyingly inquisitive? After a long, hard day of following the rules, who wants to deal with troublesome kids? 49% of children suffer from Oppositional Defiant Disorder, or ODD. Symptoms of ODD include independent thought, rampant creativity, and failure to submit to authority. But now there's a solution. The good people at Pilfer can help you with their time-release, once-daily capsule, Compliacin. Your child won't be able to form his own opinions, let alone express them. It maintains your child's ability to go to a state-run school and perform simple tasks around the house. You won't have to worry about parenting, and the school won't have to deal with your kid asking questions. Compliacin. You'll go from this. Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! To this. Good morning, Mother. I love going to school. And this week we're learning all about how the government is our federal family and they're here to help us. Compliacin. Talk to your school psychiatrist and ask for it by name. Uh, welcome everybody to the Cop Lock Radio Show live for June 4th. 2014. This is a show dedicated to police accountability in the police state, and I am your host, Eric, and with me tonight, I have Scott. How you doing, man? Good, man. How are you doing? Good. A little tired. Yeah, I know the feeling, man. <laughs> That's how it goes. I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah. Early week this week, and I'm just whew, struggling. So is but, that... Anything yep. stick to you this week? Because I haven't done anything. I'm bo- I, I've been sleeping. <laughs> You've been sleeping? Uh, I haven't been sleeping enough. I've been like monitoring more closely how much I'm sleeping. And uh, four hours to five hours a night really just isn't cutting it. Uh, tonight will be no exception. All right. So um, 
I think the big story for this week, I'm guessing you saw that there was a raid on a house over a $50 meth transaction in which the SWAT team who was raiding the place threw a flashbang grenade into the crib of a 19-month-old who was sleeping and it exploded near his face and now he has huge wounds on his face and chest and suffered severe burns. 